Hello, welcome to the June edition of this month's experiment from the Reuben H. Fleet Science Center in San Diego, California. I'm Caitlin Schindler. And I'm Brandon Elliott. So today we're going to be doing an experiment that finds out the hidden colors in a black marker. Mm. Very cool. We want to thank the Exploratorium for helping us out with this experiment. Remember, you can find all the details for our experiments on our website, www.rhfleet.org. I'm going to tell you what you need for our experiment today. The black marker. Yes. Okay, that's one thing. We're going to need some coffee filters, some white coffee filters like this. Um, a pie tin, pie plate. Okay. Some paper clips and some water. Awesome. Right. Thanks, Brandon. Absolutely. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take a coffee filter and we're going to fold it in half like a taco and then fold it again like a pizza slice. Then we're going to take our black marker and we're going to draw a line just about an inch from the bottom here, okay? So I'm going to use this one and we're going to draw a nice black line right along the bottom. Not too close to the bottom, but right about... About an inch. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good inch. Perfect. All right. Then you're going to pop it open like a cone and just use a little paper clip to secure the bottom here, like so. And then we're going to put it right on in the pie pan just to make sure that the water doesn't actually reach the marker line. You want it to touch the bottom of the filter, but not the marker itself. All right. So we're going to put some water right on in there. And there it, there goes. it goes. All right. We can already see the water starting to crawl. It's about to hit the line. And, and look at that. All right. Maybe we need to wait a few more minutes. But there it goes. There we go, and you can kind of see it's already starting to absorb into the paper, and mm -hmm. look what's happening to the black marker. Right, there. it's carrying a lot of the pigments along with it, there but right. the mar the colors are starting to change. It's not staying black. That's right. So we've got I see some sort of brownish going on, and then maybe some reddish and some bluish. Looks so like a little blue. So what's going on here, Brandon? <laughs> well, basically, it turns out that markers have all different kinds of pigments in them that give them their color. That's mm -hmm. kind of how they make them. So when we do this experiment, we can kind of see what pigments are inside of the black marker. Ah. So basically what happens is all of the pigments are being carried away as they're absorbed into the paper here. Mm -hmm. They're being carried up here. And what happens is the pigments all travel at different rates because okay. for a couple of different reasons. The pigments may have a certain size of the molecules. Mm -hmm. um, some pigments are more attracted to the paper than others, and that's going to carry them away at different rates. So okay. it really kind of just spreads out all those different pigments within the marker. Okay, so, so the ones that travel the furthest up, they're traveling away the farthest. All right, so the ones that are down the bottom, they're going to be slower. Yes. Ah, excellent. So we've got this black ink here that's made up of all these different colors. Right. So that's cool. Yeah. So why is it that all of these different colors are making black? That is a really good question. Well, when you talk about paint or ink and the colors that they have, the way we see those colors is because they actually absorb certain colors of white light and they reflect others. So a green marker, we see that as green because it reflects green light back at us and it absorbs all the other colors of white light. Same for a blue marker, for a red marker, and so on. When you start mixing colors, each additional color that you add, it actually absorbs more and more light. So if you've got a mixture that's absorbing almost all the light and then all the colors of light and reflecting very, very little of that back at your eyes, you're going to see that as black. All right. Very cool. So this is what's inside of black. Oh, marker. man. This cool, cool, this marker right here, this little dry erase, or sorry, it's actually a wet erase yeah. marker. Don't do this with a dry erase marker. It totally doesn't work. Yeah. So this one was yellow at the bottom, and then pink in the middle, and then blue at the top. Neat. Great. I wonder if all black markers do that, or if it's just this one. Why don't we try it? Yeah, let's try it. We've got a different black marker here, okay? So we never know what different manufacturers might be doing to mm -hmm. make their black marker. So. Maybe they have a different ink recipe. Absolutely. So I'm going to fold this up like you showed us earlier. I'm going to take this one out of the way. All right. Fold it in half, right? Like a taco. And then fold it a half again. Like a pizza slice. All right, there we go. And then why don't you go ahead and draw Ooh. our line? Will do. So I'm going to draw my line just like that Perfect. very quickly. And then same as before, just clip it with a paper clip and pop it into a cone. And there we go. So we'll wait a couple of minutes and let's see what happens. All right, so let's take a look at this. And look at that. It's already a little bit different from the one that we did earlier. A little, I would call it completely different yeah. almost. Because look at this guy. This one's got yellow bottom, red middle, blue top. This one's got a 
pink bottom, yeah. and then sort of greenish, maybe with some yellow, and then blue. So these two markers, while both they're black. both black, yeah. but they actually are made of totally different pigments. Very cool. Very cool. So what are some other ways that we could do this experiment? Oh, well, I'm so glad you asked. I bet you could try it with a different color marker, maybe brown. I bet brown's made of a lot of inks. Absolutely. You know, maybe some like blue or green might not be as interesting, but you might be surprised. You should try them. And another thing you can do is change how you put the marker on the filter and where the water comes from. So for example, instead of folding up and drawing a line, you could draw a circle around it and then put that in the middle of a cup and then let the water go out so you make sort of like a sunburst effect. Right, it kind of ends up like one of these that we did earlier. Oh yeah, that one was really cool. We did yeah. three circles and then let the ink go. And you can tell that's an e even a different marker. Yeah. It's got a lot of blue and then some darker colors in there as well. Or you could make spots. So make a couple of spots on there, like so. And then use an eyedropper to drop water right on your ink spot. And that ends up giving you more of a tie-dye effect, which is something I did on this one with several different colors of ink. Oh, very cool. Thank you, Caitlin. You're welcome. And thank you for watching this month's experiment. Be sure to tune in next month, and remember, do, do try, try this at home. home.